Hello everyone. Happy August. We're in the first full week of August. Um yeah, like I always say, time was for no one. And today we're here to talk about Simone Biles Arising, the docuseries about gymnastics, superstar, Simone Biles. But before we do, as always, obligatory of promotion yes please if you have not or if you would like to see some of my poetry or read some of my poetry technically um this is it what if i wrote the world my first book this is the back cover me looking real cute i i don't know i highly recommend it of course because i'm trying to sell it but for yourself linked in the description linked in my bio always linked everywhere so that that's done we're gonna talk about the docuseries it was released this year july 17th just last month um and the synopsis is an american doc documentary series that explores the emotional and physical journey of olympic gymnastics Gymna gymnast Simone Biles returned to competition. And you can stream it on Netflix. I think it's a Netflix exclusive. So if you gotta get somebody a password or something, do what you gotta do. Um, I'm gonna give a very mini biography because the show kind of it doesn't tell her like it doesn't say every single thing about her life, but I feel like it gives a good overview of her childhood and her gymnast career basically um i feel like it gives a good overview and you know she's the one talking in the interviews and uh, her family and friends so yeah so you get all the scoop so it's gonna be very many um she was born march 14th 1997 uh she's an american artistic gymnast she has she's 11 olympic medals 30 world championship medals and that makes her the most decorated gymnast in history. Hey. Um, and she's widely considered the greatest gymnast of all time. And she has a little goat um, necklace because she's the goat. Uh, with her 11 Olympic medals, she is tied with, I'm going to say his name so wrong. I'm so sorry to this woman. Vera Kala Kasla Sly Ska. Vera, I'm so sorry. I totally. I'm going to try to say it fast. Kusla. Ska. Kusla Ska. I'm so sorry. But yeah, they're tied. As the, she is the second most decorated female Olympic gymnast and has the most medals earned by a U.S. gymnast. So, a little bit about her. Um, I don't think she talks about how she first. She kind of mentions, like, kind of why. She wanted to be a gymnast, but, and you can see that, like, in the show, I don't want to tell y'all too much, because I'm just going to, spoiler alert, I think you should watch the show. So, um, but it does show her very young, so I, I think it was, like, she wanted to do something with her, like, childhood or something like that. Of course, I, so, like, I need to rewatch it. So, but yeah, it's a lot. Um, and it's only two episodes, which, I'm like. Not a lot to go on. Um, but there are more episodes coming in the fall. But yeah. Um, she does talk about why she wanted to be a gymnast. Even though I don't remember the exact reason. But. Um, I just have some clips of her when she was younger. And. Um, yeah. And you used to see her. Doing some of that stuff when you were younger. And there's one thing that was in the documentary. I mean the docuseries. That I feel like. For like all parents of everything that they want to be. Your kid wants to be an actor, a singer, a gymnast, anything. You need to be there. You need to be uh, up in the rooms with them. Because um, when they, they were talking about this gym camp. I can't remember the name. But they were like two coaches that um, were from, I think they was from Yugoslavia or the Czech Republic. I know those are not the same country, but they were from some place like that. And they did not allow parents. And I 
I don't know. I feel like that's kind of crazy. Like, especially hearing all the, especially what happened with them, with Larry Nazar. I think he was the Olympic doctor and he ended up unfortunately sexually abusing a lot of them. And um, I think he got, he got a lot of years. I think at least 40, which I hope it's not like a 40 in a parole. I hope it's like a you in there. Um, but yeah, they did not allow parents. And like after hearing about, you know, um, what's the other one? The Nickelodeon one? I can't remember the name right now. But and they're talking about the Dan Snyder stuff. Or I'm talking about R. Kelly with Aaliyah. It's like, yeah, parents need to be involved. They need to be everywhere. If you are. I don't, and I, I get it. If people want to be gymnasts, they want to, and like this camp was like one of the highest, like they were like the best coaches. Um, in the camp, like in the gymnastic world, but it's just like I don't like that, and I, I don't know if people like that before, but it's just like with so much stuff. Oh, quiet on the set. That's what's called. With so much stuff that has been going on in the industry world and the and now the sports world, and I'm sure there's even more in different sports, parents really need to be, we, you know, once I become a parent, I'm really going to be involved, like, because it's just like so much craziness happening, unfortunately, um, because, you know, even if your child does want to be a star, you know, you got to make sure you are looking out for their best interests, because people are crazy, but yeah. So now, let's get into my pros and my cons, my overall opinion. So, one of my pros is Simone telling her own story. Uh, you get to hear Simone's story from her own mouth, and you get the behind-the-scenes feelings and emotions that she's had. And it was nice that she was able to tell her life story uh, her way, and even admit that social media can get to her. But now she gets to take back her story and not just let social media control her narrative. And I feel like that is really good because people on social media are just so annoying, especially on Twitter. Like, I'm not going to call it the other name. It's Twitter. Um, it's just so critical of everybody when you're not even a professional in that, in that same way. You know, she showed how people call her Twitter and all this stuff. And people were like, well... Uh, you know, I guess when they were talking about it was mental health and not physical, they were like, well, we could understand if it's physical. It's like, um, when she was explaining, I don't know if I talked about this afterwards. So I'm trying to make sure I don't talk about it too early. I don't think I, I don't see it in my notes. Oh, I do. I have a section on mental health, so I'm going to hold off on that. But people don't realize, you know, as athletes, if you are not in the right headspace, you could hurt yourself. You could kill yourself on accident, you know, have some kind of accident on death. Like she was talking about in the documentary. And it's like, and we need to talk about it. Especially like in the past couple of years, we've had, I know I'm going to say his last, his name, his first name wrong. But I think the football player's last name was Hernandez. He had a lot of mental health issues. And I think he killed himself and his family. If that's wrong, let me know. But we really got to talk about it because it's like we have these people going through all these physical changes that can also affect their mental health. We have now we're starting to talk about CTE and head injuries with football, but it's still, you know, I still feel like we have a long way to go. And, you know, people on social media sitting on there judging when you can't even do those things. And she mentioned, like, how people are judging her, but they can't do a cartwheel. Listen, I can't do a cartwheel, so I'm not going to judge nobody. I can't do none of that stuff. But people, they get on the internet and they judge them. Um, One thing I will say, of course, it's subjective. It's about live performances. And, you know, hey, and then also, I'm not up there either. So, even though I will, I will judge a live performance, especially if uh, people are paying to see you. I put some pepper in your step, but of course, you know, I'm you're not the one on stage, you're not the one doing the gymnastics, you're not the one in the on the football field, 
You're not the one on the baseball field. You're not there. So we got to gotta rein in how judgmental we'll be on social media. So I do agree with her on that because, like, you talking all this shit, you can't do none of that. So, Oh, and then my second pro is her family members being there. It was nice seeing her parents. And then her mom talked about their relationship and how someone was raised. <clears throat> it was also nice seeing her sister. I did not know she was a sister. They look like I know they're sisters. They do. They look so alike, which is like duh. But yeah, yeah, it's so interesting because I don't got no sisters. <laughs> but it's nice that uh, it, uh, oh, their relationship was close. That was nice to see, and someone was protective of her and learning about her mom. Who was supposed to be her grandma and her grandpa rose to the challenge of getting her and her little sister out of foster care to raise them. That was really heartwarming. I always love foster care stories where the families are able to take the kids back and, you know, able to raise them with their families. Because it's just so sad when you get these kids through the system and they get just with um, foster parents who don't really care about them. They just want the money. Um that they get from the state, they're not, they don't really care about these kids. It's really sad, you know, and it's always, I've, even though, I'm not saying the then the family's going to be any better than the parents, but um, I do think it's better, I guess, we'll give it a 50-50, I guess, that the kids get put with their actual families. I really like that. And I saw this tweet so long ago, and it was like, why do, why does the government pay other people to take foster kids but not give the money to the family to help take care of the kids? Which is a really good point because it's like, if you're going to give somebody else money to take care of the child, why not give the family the money to take care of the child? Very weird. But yeah. So my third pro is uh, the training footage. That was really cool to see. Um, it's very interesting what goes into training to being a gymnast and how long you have to prepare. I think she was prepared for the Paris Olympics a year in advance. And then I think she was also preparing for the world champions. So it was like, you know, you got to get prepared early. And, you know, she went to the world champions first and then she went to the Olympics. So it was like, yeah, get ready for both. Well, it was a lot. Um, as I've said many times before, I'm not athletic. So... Yeah, I don't know nothing about this life. Uh, where am I? And I didn't realize you had to go to other competitions before the Olympics. And then you have to try out for the Olympics, too. Uh, I thought you get picked from, like, the past competitions you would do. And they're like, oh, we see that you're good. We'll put you on the team. But it does make sense that you have to try out. Because, I don't know, it just makes sense. Like, that you just don't automatically get on the Olympics. Because, you know, I'm sure it's very competitive. Um, it was nice to see what it takes and what goes into actual competitions, like the hair, your hair, your makeup, your outfit, even your facial expressions get judged. Which somebody mentioned, like I said, I don't know much about gymnastics, but somebody said women get judged on their facial expressions, like women gymnasts, but not male gymnasts. So I have to, I'm gonna have to look at that. I don't like that because it seems like every, every single industry women get judged. Especially black women. Which they talked about in the documentary. Like if your hair not right, your makeup not right, it goes to all is can be counted against you. And it's only for women. Which I, I just feel like it's just too much pressure. It's crazy. But yes, you went into they went into detail about that. Um and she shared her oh oops, I'm looking at the wrong note. So yeah, it's a lot of effort all around, you know, and she showed some clips of her and like other gymnasts getting afraid of you. Um, and now I will say they did not go into too much detail about the costumes, like too much like background, but um, yeah. We did get to see her doing her makeup with the other gymnasts and them talking about hair and them talking about, you know, how all those things go into your performance and how you're judged. And then my last pro is she does talk about mental health. So, now I'm going to get into that. Um, yeah, I mentioned this in my TikTok slash shorts video. That she really stressed that mental health is important. That can affect your physical health. Especially a sport like gymnastics. Like I said, 
Uh, I don't think I said. I think I said a little bit. You can get seriously injured, or worse, if your mind's not focused. Um, even like you know when they're talking about the twisties, I had no idea what they were. Um, and it's like basically when your mind and your body are not in sync, and you can get really hurt. Like if you're not like focused. So that's very intense. Which I know every sport kind of has like a an injury or death risk, which is. I mean, you know, if you love the sport, I guess it's it's worth the risk, but it's it's very intense, you know. It really is. Um, just like I was talking about the CTE with football, and you can have so many other um things happen. Uh LeBron James son, Bronny, I think his name, James, he had a heart attack. That's really sad because he's like I don't think I don't think he's in his twenties yet. I think he's like either late teens or early 20s so that's he might be older i might be wrong but that's that's a scary thought you know but you know being an athlete i'm sure it you know it puts pressure on your whole body and all your organs like everything so yeah it's very intense um she even had her husband going to therapy which i did not know i, I guess there's therapy for everything but she said mentioned going to sports therapy so i guess that's like specific if you're an athlete which makes sense um, so she wants, like, uh, oh, and I think it's good for couples to go to therapy, either individually or together, even if things are going great, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, so she wants herself and everyone around her to be mentally healthy. And, oh, also her sharing about her sexual abuse was very heartbreaking and showing how she hadn't taken time to heal from it before going to the Paris Olympics. That's why her mind wasn't, like, where it should have been. And um, she did testify at Larry Nassar's, I don't know if it was a trial or if it was, like, a like pre-press conference. She was, had talked at one of those. Um, and, yeah, and it was really sad, you know. And um, especially because, like, you know, like I said, the parents couldn't be there at that camp. So it's like you're trusting these people are have your children's best interest at heart and they might not and it's really scary you know what i mean and then the only con i had was that it's short and it's only two episodes and i'm really invested and i want more so that's the only con i had which i guess is like not really a con con but here's my overall opinion i really enjoyed this docuseries and it gave me insight into who simone biles is outside of Outside of her career, it's really nice seeing a mixture of a mix of different behind the scenes moments from her home life to training to competitions. Um, it was also nice to know more about how she met her husband and how they bonded. And he also was more likable on the docuseries than his first impression. So if you saw that one interview, y'all know which one interview I'm talking about. You were like, mm, he is more likable. The show. They both seem very. Do I say that in my next point? Yes. They're both very supportive of each other. And, you know, she goes to his games, he goes to her competitions. And it was very sweet to see. Um, They're very cute together to me. So, you know, hey. And she's not complaining. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut because they. I have seen her going off on people. But I also feel like that's another thing with social media. Sometimes people. Just take it too far. And it's like, okay, if you had a bad first impression, that's it. Why are we still talking about it 14 months later or six months later or however months later? Like, if she's in the relationship and she's having a good time, that's it. Like, why do we have to keep pecking at it? Um, And even if they are, even if celebrities are complaining, they still like to cuss out other people who also complain. So I, I just leave it alone. And this, I feel like it's like the thing where, like the analogy where like you're saying something negative about your sibling, for example, but if somebody else says it, then you're like, hold on now. So I feel like that's the same thing, but like even if people are complaining about their relationship, if somebody outside complains, then they're going to get defensive. So, yeah, I don't even, um, like I'll like some tweets, but I'm not about to make the tweets because I'm like, listen, if they like it, I love it. You just got to leave it at that with some people because, 
you know, people coming to somebody's defense that doesn't want to be defended. Leave it alone. So, yeah. Um, oh, and it was nice hearing about her childhood, even though some things were sad. You know, like being in foster care and being reunited before being reunited with your family members. Um, she does have two other siblings. I'm only, I'm not gonna tell you everything about the show because I think you should watch it. So you will learn what happens with the other siblings. Um, they actually have a they have a good story after being out of foster care. Kind of similar, but you know. So yeah, her and her sister were taken by her grandparents. They adopted them too. But the other two um, siblings. It's a good story. I don't want to tell you everything because I think y'all should watch it. Okay. And I highly recommend this docuseries. I give it a 10 out of 10. And I'm excited to see more episodes in the fall. Like, it's really cool. Um, and I kind of wish they talked more about, like, the outfits and stuff. I feel like they probably did, but it's just, I feel like it was a lot. Because they had not only Simone and her family, but they also had other, like, experts, um, announcers. They had former gymnasts come on the show as well so kind of a lot but it was really good like a lot of good information that i never knew so okay so i want to go on like i don't know if it's a rant or if it's like an analysis i'm gonna i might call it an analysis but he says in the docuseries that red makes her feel powerful and i think expressing yourself to color can truly be beneficial um this can also vary from person to person but for me when I wear brighter colors, I feel more outgoing and fun. I feel like a little pep in my step, you know? Like you're bright. You feel happier, you know? Um, and I feel like earth tones kind of calm me down and make me more relaxed. And I feel like black can be like mysterious or sexy depending on what it is. Like if it's a little black dress. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm feeling real sexy. Or if it's like, you know, you're wearing like a black jumpsuit, maybe you feel cool like a cat suit, you know. Um, or it can also make you feel like laid back as well. Like when I'm at home, uh, I like to wear all black casual clothes very often, which I'm actually wearing now. You can't see my pants, but um, but yeah, I'm wearing my, one of my comfort shirts. My little um, sailor, black sailor shirt. And I'm wearing black sweatpants, you know, very chill. Today's a rainy day too. So I'm not planning on going out until tomorrow. But yeah, that's just like how I feel like some colors can help like express you. Um, I feel like color can be our way of showing our personality and our feelings. And then black can also be for mourning and white could be for connection since a lot of brides wear white wedding dresses. And I think not only what we wear, but the color of it can tell a story. That's my little rant. Um, also, you know, for different styles, different coloring, and like be a signature like for example if you're gothic you're wearing black but it also you can be like a pastel goth you wear pastel colors so it's like really interesting even color within like a specific style or like trend can mean can like mean something different um it also reminds me of those pictures of like one friend who's like really colorful and one friend who's goth but they're still like best friends or like sisters or whatever the case may be it's really interesting to see like how that like shows off your personality and like your particular style, what colors you use, and you know, um, and how like even within the same styles it could be different, but still within the style parameter. So yeah, that's my thought on color expression, and the red color red does mean powerful and it means romantic, uh, passionate. I looked this up. And, you know, so it does make sense that she likes to wear uh, red when she's competing. And also, I can't remember if I saw this online or they mentioned it in the documentary. She wore a teal leotard to support Larry Nazar's other victims um, in one of her competitions. So that was really nice to see, too. So it could be a lot of different things. And then also with color with the Olympics, you're when you're in the American team, you're wearing your... Red, white, and blue, of course. And it also, like, 
showing your country pride and when you're in other countries you have their colors on so it's like color can really mean a lot of things i mean patriotism nationalism expression it's like color can do a lot of different things when you're wearing colorful makeup you know you might be going somewhere exciting like a concert it's like colors can like really enhance something and like express something for everyone oh yeah those are my thoughts on simone biles rising and my color expression analysis so what do you think of simone biles um have you watched the show have you not watched the show are you gonna watch the show because you just saw my review that would be cool if you get motivated to watch it from here um as always like comment subscribe turn on your notification bells i actually i probably shouldn't say this but i don't have any ways notifications on but i do like when I, to the people i'm subscribed to i do i do go on my like tab and see when they have new videos and stuff pretty frequently so but if you would like to know when i upload that would be great for me that'd be nice no, you're excited to see what I got to say. Well, yeah, thank you all for watching the video, and I will see you all next week.